Hello everybody, how are we all doing? We've nearly made it through February, haven't we? Um, I hope you are all well. Um, it would be great to have you comment. Are you watching? Say hello. Is it the first time that you've watched or are you a, a regular viewer for your sins? But I genuinely hope you are all well. Um, can I just start with a couple of thank yous? I hope he's watching today. But Danny, look, I got my pen right. Danny Wareham sent me a lovely handmade thank you. Uh, congratulations card for the first time of me getting paid as a self-employed uh, person. It was a lovely, lovely gesture, a lovely thing to do. Thank you, Danny. Um, Hand-drawn, and it's a card that you can put in away and it will um, grow flowers. And I also want to thank the team at Centricle. Uh, I went up to a great event of theirs and they sent me a lovely gift and a thank you card for attending. The gift was a little cactus that's already been stolen by my family. So Danny and everyone at Centricle, thank you so much. It's lovely to get stuff like that. Um, Jules, hello, mate. How are you? Danny, the man. Thank you, the legend. Lovely little bee drawing now on my um, on my whiteboard. Uh, all the family love that. Hello, mate. Cameron, big boss man. Oh, Cam, look. Can you see the other side? I've got a Mr. T. <laughs> um, oh, thank you. Veteran viewer. I have to say, Bev is helping me so much with the um, team leader community. She's an absolute legend. Um, so knowledgeable, so caring, and just lovely, lovely, lovely friend. Nick, morning. Very welcome, mate. It was great to have you join us. I'm looking forward to more of those type of events with you guys. It was really well run. It was, it was brilliant. So thank you very much. <laughs> yeah, Mr. T. There he is. The similarities between me and him are endless. <laughs> so um, let's start with the first, the first question for you all. And that is um, one that I guess some people might go, why are you even asking this? But let's just go and I'll explain why. What is the relationship between contact centres and CX? And the reason I thought I'd put this out there, two things, two experiences I had. One was as a contact centre manager. I can remember getting, we, were at, we had a meeting and then one of the agenda items was CX. And I'll be honest, I, I didn't know what that meant. <laughs> so when it got to that point, the senior leaders around the table started talking about it. And it was me and a couple of other contact centre managers we were actually told you don't need to be in this part so i don't didn't like meetings particularly so i took any opportunity to leave and left and um it was only later on that i thought surely i should have been in there um it was uh, a very strange experience to be kind of left out and then the second experience is when I first started engaging with LinkedIn properly and I would see people who uh, their title was CX professional and it felt like it was another industry so it would it would be great to kind of help people maybe like me back then who didn't see the link but from your you guys are so much more smarter than me what is the relationship between contact centers and CX? Is it one and the same? Should we make any distinction? Where do you see us? And by us, I mean contact centers. What, what is the relationship with CX? Oh, I've missed a few. Sorry. Oh, Neris, look. Virgin TV viewer. Is this the first one? Well, it is amazing to have you. Neris, a legend of our industry as is Simon, morning mate, and then, oh, it's just a room full of legends, Barry, who equally is being a massive help in the um, team leader community, thank you so much mate, Nick, a little late, 
no worries. Maybe you could chip in straight away on this, this question here. What is the relationship? Is it, are we all just one and the same? Is it um, our contact centers just the, the vehicle by which CX is delivered? Or should the people in operations have a, a seat at the table? So I'm hoping that you guys and your experiences, Neris, chip in straight away. What is the relationship between contact centers and CX? When you see CX, do you automatically think of contact centers? Or when you see contact centers, do you think, oh, well, that'll include um, CX? Or are we, are we different? Hi, Leica. OK, contact center is a key execution arm of the overall CX vision. Lovely, that is, Neris. Anyone would think this was your actual skill set. <laughs> You're welcome. Great to be part of the community. Thanks, mate. Um, CX is every touch point a customer has with a brand, in store, online, etc. Contact center is a focal point for customer questions and problems. Very true. Cameron, hello, mate. Contact centers are often a real and meaningful experience for customers, often the only one. Turning the seat contact center into the voice and feel of the brand. So true. CX is a car. Contact center is the wheels where the rubber meets the road, the customer. They are different but connected. Danny, you paint such lovely pictures with your words. Yes. Phil and Rich. Slam Duggan's here, everybody. Um, if you like basketball, check out Phil as well, because he does a great um, side hustle, as well as all the awesome work that him and the guys do at ECO. JD, hello, mate. Okay, so some lovely, lovely comments here. Um, why, do you, why do you think, then, that there is this kind of um, distinction do we are we are we excluding some of our, our um, naturally i think about the team leader community are we do we have to be careful that we don't um exclude people by saying oh this is cx this is contact centers contact center is vital because it's a focal point if the business doesn't listen to what customers say to the contact center all is lost and nick cameron roberts great point it's very often the only two-way interaction between humans so true so true. So keep these um, these comments coming. Uh, hopefully, from what you're saying and from what you guys see then, is that experience that I started with about kind of being asked to leave the room when CX was being spoken. And it wasn't just me, by the way. There was another contact centre manager also, uh, well, said, oh, maybe you can leave. Um, is that a thing of the past? Oh, here we go. Neris, contact centre should absolutely have a seat at the table. When I see CX, I think of, for God's sake, another generic term that is easily misunderstood. CX vision has to be enshrined in all activities and success measures within the contact centre. So CX vision, white glove service, contact centre can't measure AHT. Why? Because it's from marketing and they are generally snobs. Yeah, I love it. Oh, Neris, brilliant. Um Distinction was born out of marketing, leading the CX invented term. Wow. I never knew this. This is why you guys are brilliant. Uh, for me, the contact center is, is an amazing for the early warning indicators and insight to where the customer journey needs refined or improved. The frontline team often have a better finger on the pulse than the CEX professionals up the chain. They need a voice and a seat at the table for sure. Thanks, Simon. That is brilliant. If you're not connected with Simon, please do. He is an excellent professional and is um, looking for a new role. So everyone watching, connect with Simon if you're not already and um, just engage because that that's the kind of content that he has. Snobbery. Contact centres can be seen as a cost centre and therefore to do what is told by other areas. So true. He, he, you know, I know this is something that um, I'm talking to people about pretty much every week that one of their key targets is cut cost yet deliver more, and how, how challenging is that? Um, CX team, CS customer service teams are often the first to be impacted when CX goes wrong somewhere else in the journey. They're also responsible for trying to turn things around for customers and regularly 
turn an unhappy customer to a happy one. <laughs> yeah, no, it's cool. I'd love that we both say snob. <laughs> Got to go to bed. Really enjoying these discussions, Martin. Thanks, Cameron, mate. Good night, night. Um, okay, so let me just give you, whilst you're, please, oh, here we go. Sorry. If you want to live interactive experience, no doubt the actors involved help bring that experience to life. You think Scarefest, the contact center, can help bring our CX to life for our customers. You guys are bringing this to life massively. This is brilliant. Um, that kind of change in thinking, just to say, get outside of the here and now, the operations, and think about what you're actually delivering by referencing something else that people can understand, I think is brilliant, Barry. You're, you're an expert at that. Okay, so let me just give you a very quick update. It's week two now of the team leader community. Um, Barry and Bev are, are both in it, as are um, just under 50 uh, team leaders. And we are, I must admit, I'm absolutely loving it. We're having such a good time. <laughs> I'm not sure if that was the plan, but um, we are loving it. So goals are being achieved thanks to being in the community questions are being asked and answered, best practices being shared, and interactive sessions are, are taking place. And there's, there's so much more to come. So if you or team leaders that you know in your organization or organizations you're connected with want to be part of this, now is a great time, actually. I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying that, but now is a great time because we're building it. There's so much more to come interactive learning, live streams, podcasts, everything is happening in the in the team leader community. And um, I hope the team leaders are loving it as much as I am because it's, uh, it's really, really good fun. Um, okay, now let's head over to the news. Welcome to the news. <laughs> I have a spot. <laughs> 49, still getting spots. I don't know. Anyway, let's have some good news. So the team at EE in Greenock um, made the local news because, as you can see here, kind staff from a local call centre helped revamp a care home garden. A Greenock care home has revamped, revamped its garden thanks to local call centre staff. Staff from EE were happy to dig in at Bagatelle Care Home on Eldon Street. The visit was conducted as part of the recent random acts of kindness. Now, I could bombard you with negative news about our industry, whether that's people that are talking about their experiences, whether it's job layoffs, and it's quite hard to find positive news. I think we've got to be much better as an industry at sharing stories like this. We do it in awards and things like that, but we should be reaching out to our um, local media outlets and letting them know about this kind of stuff because these guys got in the paper and well done to them. Um, making a positive difference has a massive impact on employee engagement, just on the local community itself sharing a vision about what the contact center is, dispelling myths, all of these great things, we should do far more in kind of pushing it out there and saying, look at what we look at what we do. Um, so I love that. I love that story. How do we get into the community? Um, I will, if you, it's a great question. Phil. <laughs> I used to be in sales as well. A long time ago. Um, I will share a link. I will send you a link. Um, it's on my LinkedIn page. Um, but yeah, just message me and we'll we'll get it sorted out for you, mate. Thank you. And okay, seamlessly transitioning to the second story. A new contact center opening. I'm probably gonna mangle this uh, pronunciation. Croisy Europe. So Croisy Europe is to open a UK call center which will allow it to sell flight-inclusive packages in the UK for the first time. It's going to open tomorrow. Um, it's also recruiting for business development manager in the Midlands and north of England and Scotland. And John Fair, the UK sales director, said, we're really excited to be working with Blue Water Holidays, who will be managing our call centre. 
We've enjoyed a successful relationship with them for many years, and I'm confident they can help us with our expansion plans in the UK. Really, really good to see, um, because like I said, a lot of the news is about contact centres closing, jobs moving, being lost. So this is a, a, a good news a good news story. So I'm very pleased to, to share that. If you have anything that you want to share, it doesn't have to have been in the media world. Um, if you have stuff that you want to share that your contact centre is doing, please just let me know. If this all of this news section could be things that are happening in your team, I, I really don't mind if it's celebrating someone's anniversary, promotion, something that someone's done, something that your teams have done, celebrating all of the good stuff that happens, or maybe some innovation and things like that, please just let me know. Here we go. EC Outsourcing is turning 10 next month. Phil, give me pictures. Let's talk and let's let's share it. So and happy, happy birthday. Happy birthday. I think you're up to a thousand people now, am I right? So which is great. Absolutely great. Okay. Now then. Ah, okay. Time for some interaction. Here's where I need your help. I've done this before. Let's hope it works. Get your phones ready. We're going to share a, we're going to do a poll. I need your help. So it's our interactive poll. Go to menti.com, enter the code 63978405, or hold your phone up to the screen and use that QR code. And here's the question. What would you like to see more of in this show? So in the time that I allocate, the time that you all manage to give up, which I massively appreciate, let's say half an hour to 40 minutes, what would you like to see more of? More chat and opinion, topical debates, Thank you for voting. It's working. Isn't that cool? <laughs> Industry news. Is there If there's anything else that isn't on there that you would like to see, um, please do use the comments. It's, this is like, this is like, remember CFAX? <laughs> this is like watching the scores come in. Obviously, we'd like to see more of you, Cam. A thousand and eight, to, to be precise. I bet you know all their names as well, Phil. So we are looking like topical debates, industry news, more chat and opinion. I'm assuming... Uh, <laughs> Hugo, do you know what? He is asleep at the moment, and I, I, I'm not going to lie, I've timed my walk for that to happen. <laughs> But yeah, I'm, I'm sure he can he can feature more. Um, he's doing well. Topical debates, industry news, more chat and opinion. Okay, this is great. And would would the topical debates be? Would you want people to come in? Would you want me to invite people to share the screen and we do it kind of um, live? More chat and opinion. <laughs> what about more do you know what the that was a year ago um so we went to the show on saturday so my two uh stepdaughters were in that in the show where i appeared last year and i have to admit um i was a little bit disappointed that there wasn't a dad's dancing team again apparently the teacher just natalie could not deal with a few months of rehearsals of us again, or me, she said, which I think is a little bit unfair. <laughs> okay, what have we got? The odd guest appearance, not to take away from the pod, but maybe someone come on to do a news update for you, like an outside report. That is cool. That's a great idea, Barry. Guests from around industries, yeah, happy, di happy do, happy days, that's brilliant. Guests would be good too. Okay, 
this is this is totally your uh, your show, everybody. So we're going to go for more topical debates, more chat, industry news, and we will also do a few invited guests for a roundtable discussion. I love it. I'm not precious about this. I don't um, the other people you guys always evidence in the comments that you know more than me anyway so i'm happy to facilitate some great people coming on and and chatting so i'm so glad that this little interactive poll worked i will commit to you now from an accountability point of view that this will be bought on and we'll also do um some guests so you don't have to just listen to me wittering on all the time <laughs> in the comments as well please do keep anything else that you would uh take a short exit from the pod to start a conversation promotes the pod and easier to control time danny that's a that's a really good shout and i've managed to get a little bit better uh some editing software that i use which means that i can take excerpts from the video part of the podcast far better than I ever used to so I could I could absolutely do that that is brilliant okay now then let me stop this I think we have a winner and I just want to share with you um, now if you remember the contact babel read-along so all I'm doing is going through it page page by page. So I'm not cherry picking. Oh, Peter's here. Events tips are really useful, but better in the newsletter, maybe. Oh, Peter. Yeah, very true. Very true. I haven't got events in this one, but yeah, so good point, Peter. Um, okay. So, yeah, contact Babel read along. The next um, section we are up at is talk and idle time. And I have to say, I love what contact Babel have done. Look at that, going back to 2005 to 2022, talk time has dropped. This is agents from all of the contact centers they've served, surveyed, and we know it's a lot. It's dropped from 64.6% talk time in 2005 to 50.3. So the lowest percentage of talk time in all of that period, whilst idle time has remained pretty static. Um, Neris, I absolutely hate that. <laughs> idle time okay Neris please explain because you've definitely piqued my interest what what is it this what do you hate about it I I hate idle being a code within the contact center solutions <laughs> yes Pete idle time oh ho, 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 ho. I love this so, and I'm help me understand then. So, idle as in idle. That time between calls is some of the most valuable, particularly when nurturing relationships and culture. Very true. Do you think then this is a time for an update in our terminology? Um, Charlie, idle time, not doing anything. Charlie is an awesome, awesome human being. Unfortunately, he supports Arsenal. So was there any analysis of the discrepancy? This applies that only 59% of time is now measured. Uh, Nick, I think it's a good point. What they, uh, they were just showing these two measures um there was lots of other stuff in between this was the only graph though um so it's a it's a really good point i'll put more in the in the newsletter totally agree on idle insinuates that people do nothing i can't type fast enough on this phone idle hands don't like 
as a teal, we used to monitor this quite closely. Rap time. Very true, mate. It's where the name came from, isn't it? Does it distinguish outbound from inbound? Uh, this, this was inbound, Bev. Really good point. Language matters always. So what, given, given your feedback, and I think it's really, um, really key because there's, you know, the, the reaction is you guys are vociferous about this. I, I, to be honest, I didn't even think. I just kind of put it up there. Um, again, the term idle comes from contact center vendors, a bit like marketing. They generally don't understand the reality of in life contact center operations. It's a really, really good point. And if you think about some of the stuff I spoke on, well, I was on the panel for Disrupt and we talked about the cognitive load of agents increasing because they don't get those transactional interactions or moments to be able to um, just relax, enjoy. Um, wow, okay, idle implies inefficiency, which it absolutely isn't. People aren't robots, machines, where we need to strive for 100% runtime. Very true. Um, idle is a horrible term. I prefer opportunity. Will this be an impact of people working from home? Really good point, Charles. An old boss used to beat me over the head about my idle time like I was doing nothing in that time. In that time, I'm reflecting, doing admin, and getting ready for my next call. Uh, really, re these are great points, everybody. Um, and I can remember working in a contact centre where there was the genuine discussion when I first joined, genuine discussion about how we how we fill that time. And I just said, what what are we doing? What's what's the problem? Just let people do what they want. Danny Wareham, absolutely this that all language always matters. No, idle and rap are different. Idle is the bit after rap, waiting for calls. Anyway. No, you haven't. This is the whole point. There is no track, Neris. This is great. This is absolutely great. This is what, um, and from that poll, right, everybody wants to talk about, if we come across something, um, everyone wants to talk about it. I love this because we, we shouldn't think that all of this stuff is done to us. We are this stuff, yeah? We are our industry. We can, if we want, change all, all of this. We can change the perception and to um, Danny's point, the perception change is often driven through a language change, right? Um, exactly, Nick. Perhaps idle should be and breathe. Uh, that's ex exactly what I do, Nick. I call it breathing space. But the MI still generally says idle as it's hard-coded. And then idle is beyond your control to a degree. Very true. This is definitely not off track. This is a kind of track we want to be on. <laughs> we want to make a we want to make a change because, again, idleness um, does kind of insinuate that we have people just swinging in hammocks, smoking big cigars, uh, when in fact we know that our frontline agents are um, pretty wired. Here we go, Pete. This looks like a good one. Such a dissonance between this type of language and our only drive to try and professionalise and empower. How are we challenging how we support our teams with better culture and engagement if we're not changing this? Such a, a, a great point, Pete. And to my um, comment just a while ago, we can change it. Need to jump off my busy day. Now, he's an Arsenal fan, but I do love Charlie. See you, mate. Um, so what are we going to do? Need to change the vocabulary. MI doesn't need to stay the same. So let's change it. Let's change it. There's enough people on this call and there'll be enough people that um, watch the recording. You all have an influence, I hope. Um, why don't we change it? Why don't we ask for it to be changed? I might lobby the vendor community to get it in their roadmaps. Definitely Neris. Now, if anyone can get something done, then Neris absolutely can. I've had the pleasure of working alongside you, Neris, on stuff. So let's do it. Let's change it. And in a small way, we'll, we'll make a difference. Wouldn't it be great to see something that better reflects um, these, some of these words here? Professionalise, empower, engage, culture. Brilliant. 
this has been a very, very interesting um, tangent. Not tangent. You sounded great on that call. Are you okay? Where do these important conversations start without idle time? Well, I know, again, Danny, great prompt, because firsthand, when I was wandering about as a, as a team leader, when calls finished, that was my leadership time. That was the time, and when I say leadership, I mean support. That was the time when I could just, just sit down next to someone or just engage with them and say, how are you doing? How was that? Was that call all right? Sounded bad, blah, blah, blah. How are you? What's going on? How can I help? Do you want a cup of tea? Um, all, all of these things. So you are, are dead right, Danny. So as well as Neris lobbying, let's have a think about what can what else could we do? We could contact contact Babel and say, should we start looking at some of the language? Because if you think about it, call centre change to contact centre, um, how terminology changes is a, is a fascinating subject, but it comes through, comes through us. <laughs> Come on, Cam. Or was it your time to ask me to get you a coffee? Never, never. And anyway, my coffees always took tiny amount of time because they were espressos. Look at me painting a rose-tinted kind of picture of my of what, what I used to be like and cam those firsthand. <laughs> If you look at occupancy targets of 85 to 90% to prevent burnout over burden, why do we vilify the remaining 10, 15% as idle? Really true. Really true. And this is why it's your show. This is why you guys are better than me. Because I just, I'm going through the report, took the one, put it up there, didn't really think. I thought we'd focus on this talk time drop. But I love that we've come here um scott williams agree we all know that anything above 90 percent will lead to burnout increased sickness really really true okay let me just take you to the next part and see if this also generates some discussion so the very next section was about the scheduling of multi-channel workforce activity by contact center size so keywords there multi-channel and the scheduling and you can see here the color codes green is using the same wfm application as for voice yellow separate uh, a separate scheduling of multi-channel activity blue not scheduled formally it's done ad hoc and red no or very little multi-channel work done and then along the bottom you have the size of the contact center so is it a small contact center? Is it medium? Is it large? And then what is the uh, average? And what I thought was interesting here is if you are in a small contact center, that means that 50%, more than 50% of your multi-channel scheduling is done either in a different system, it's not done formally, it's done ad hoc, or you don't have um, multi-channel. But in the same way that um, you guys zeroed in on, on something new, what, what do you think about this? Is it is it a surprise? Is it telling you anything that um, you think is interesting? Or is it like the Alan Partridge gif? <laughs> yeah, so what? <laughs> what? What do you think about this? And I'm working my way through this. We've got, we're only on page like 60. So there's another 390 odd pages to go. <laughs> so there's going to be a lot. But perhaps one of the first things we could do is get some people in to talk about the, the previous slide. But what do we think <clears throat> about this? So if you're in a large contact center, 72% of your multi-channel scheduling is done in the same system as that that you use for voice? Seems like a question of budget versus priority. Hi, Michael. How are you doing? Michael's a Tottenham fan out in Germany. 
Coy's great result against Chelsea the other day, wasn't it, mate? Just have to get that in. Okay, poor vendors. They have built multi-channel solutions and always lead with it. But the reality is there are so few multi-channel advisors. Excellent. Ex where have you been, Neris? This is the kind of stuff you're just coming in, hitting hitting three-pointers, hitting 30-yard screamers into the top corner. Um, so this is where vendors are kind of thinking that we're all going to be blinded by shiny, shiny, when in fact... They're not offering what the reality is. So uh, is that what you're saying? That's a really good point. I love it. Okay. So let me just now take you to... Uh, <laughs> yeah, look at this. Truth bombs from Neris. I love it. Keep dropping them. The tech is not really my strength, but the great differences in channel characteristics would mean that a single WFM platform must have incredible abilities. Is it that there are compromises and workarounds? Great question, Nick. I'm I'm with you on that one. I would love to know from someone that knows their stuff what that what that means. Okay, I have referenced this site before. Sketch planations is great if you like to see sometimes complex stuff displayed visually check out sketch planations so this is something that i'll be putting into the team leader i've already put it into the team leader community sorry um and that is about how we how being clear is not only helpful it's actually kind and when you think about coaching interactions um, especially being unclear about expectations, fuzzy on what you really need or skirting around the issue. And I have to admit that was something that um, I used to do as an early, early team leader. I'd kind of skirt around. I thought I'd explain what I wanted to someone and I hadn't because I wasn't clear. I was actually being unkind. It sets people up to fail and creates problems in the future. So being clear is kind. Um so check out sketchplanations.com. Uh, it's a great site. It's free, and you can find all kinds of um, lovely explanations there in sketch format. <laughs> um, let's go back to this, which is Neris. Is that the vendors or contact centers fault? I'm no planner, but when I see ad hoc or separate scheduling, I see inefficiencies and or lack of knowledge or opportunity on the use of tech to efficiently support operational delivery. Really, really good point. Um, I'm still not convinced, completely convinced that multi-channel individuals is in the best interest of the customer or employee do less better. Um, yeah, really good point. I can remember working when multi-channel sort of first came out and we were pursuing it blindlessly um and just from a operational point of view it meant that we did lots of stuff not as good as we could um, because we were constantly running from one place to to another and it was it was it made our job harder <laughs> um so as we come to the end of our time together i want to thank you for your comments and for your um great commentary and points and also your tips for the the show i'll definitely take them on board we'll definitely do them um yeah exactly jack of all trades master of none um the vi the vision has clear merit but the reality is the boundaries between voice and digital are born from recruitment throughout so true i've seen it work well but it's generally not adopted too many contact center tech changes led by IT you frequently have no idea what operational reality looks like and the voice of operations is lost or not even considered that kind of takes us right back to the start of that very first question Pete doesn't it where ops definitely needs to be in there from the outset and and absolutely um have a voice so you guys have all been amazing I just want to end if I can with a reminder 
to please be kind to yourself and others around you. We've all got difficult jobs. We're all busy. It's a difficult time for us all at the moment. So please do be kind to yourself and others around you. Um, I have loved this. I hope you have too. I will be back next week. I got told off for having a week off last week. Um, I will be back next week and I will incorporate some of your requests and hopefully um, see you all again next week. See you next Tuesday, everybody. Um, thank you so much for, for tuning in, for giving up some of your time. I appreciate it and take care of yourselves. Thank you.